Stargazing has always been fascinating to us. Mankind has always marveled at the stars. They tried to understand what was going on. In some cultures, these stars became linked to their religious views, ascribing to them powers to control life. And now, most of the astronomers and stargazers are unhappy. Why? It's Elon Musk's Starlink project. While internet accessibility can improve everything from entertainment to work to education and healthcare, more than 41% of the world doesn't have access to the internet at all. And that's where SpaceX comes in with Starlink, which is getting very close to launching their service. So what is it? What are the latest developments? And why should you care? First, let's see what is Starlink. Starlink is a satellite internet constellation which is being constructed by SpaceX to provide satellite internet access. The constellation will consist of 42,000 small satellites in low Earth orbit which lies 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. While current satellite-based internet services are using geostationary satellites that are orbiting over 35,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. In 2018, they estimated the total cost to be about $10 billion. The projections for yearly revenue from Starlink are $30 to $50 billion a year by 2025. Product development began in 2015, with the first two prototype test flight satellites launched in February 2018. As of September 2020, SpaceX is launching up to 60 satellites at a time, aiming to deploy 1,440 of the 260 kilograms spacecraft to provide near global service by late 2021 or 2022. So according to the company, Starlink will deliver high-speed broadband internet to locations where access has been unreliable, expensive or completely unavailable. But astronomers are unhappy about the bright satellite trains which leave their traces in astronomical photos, especially in long exposure photos. So now let's discuss the pros and cons. First, the pros. A greater speed. Optical fiber provides a better latency than present satellite-based internet providers. These satellites are just few hundreds in number and located roughly at 35,000 kilometers. So the total round trip for internet is 35,000 kilometers plus 35,000 kilometers equal to 70,000 kilometers. But Starlink is operating at 550 kilometers and there will be thousands of them. So by math, traditional satellite internet equal to 300 milliseconds. Optical cable equal to 20 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds. Starlink satellite internet equal to 3.67 milliseconds. Though the latency is theoretically 3.67 milliseconds, in real life, due to various system delays, this latency is around 20 to 30 milliseconds. In conclusion, Starlink internet is faster than conventional satellite internet and cable internet. Furthermore, Starlink's internet is fast enough for competitive gaming. Starlink's internet price is competitive. It is cheaper than cable and satellite internet in rural and suburban areas. For example, in cities, sometimes people pay $50 to $60 for 100 by 10 internet. But in rural areas, users pay the same amount of money but receive only 10 by 1 internet. Coverage It does not matter wherever you live. Starlink internet is available at your location. Starlink covers the whole world from Antarctica to the middle of the ocean. Thousands of low earth satellites orbiting above us. Its signal reaches every part of this world. Whether you are in a remote suburb, middle of the ocean or the sky, Starlink internet is available. Now let's discuss the cons. It turns out some astronomers have reasons to be concerned. Certain types of astronomy may be more negatively affected than others. That means scientists looking for distant objects beyond Neptune, including the hunt for the mysterious planet 9, might have trouble when Starlink is complete. Additionally, Starlink may be much more visible during twilight hours or the first few hours of the night, which could be a major problem in the hunt for massive asteroids headed towards Earth. These are some of the photobombs of Starlink. Portability Starlink is not portable compared to cellular internet. We can take our phone freely anywhere and receive the internet, but the Starlink dish is not portable at all. Though it is possible to install the dish over RV or boat, it is not compact enough to carry freely. Slower internet in cities. 
At any given time, Starlink has a fixed number of satellites over a specific location. All the users in that particular spot share the same bandwidth. So in cities, there are more people to share the same bandwidth than in rural areas. Thus, Starlink speed in cities will be slower compared to suburban areas. Service Disruption During Lousy Weather Satellite service disruption during rain, storm or solar storm is ordinary. However, that's not a severe issue. This kind of disruption is also real for cable internet. Space Junk According to a 2018 estimate, some 5000 satellites remain in orbit. Of those, about 1900 were operational, while the rest have lived out their useful lives and become space debris. Over 100 million bits of junk surrounded Earth from abandoned satellites, spacecraft that broke apart and other space missions. Any potential collision would fragment satellites or other orbiting objects into smaller pieces, making additional collisions more likely. If such a situation were to spiral out of control, that would result in a catastrophic chain of crashes known as a Kessler event. SpaceX isn't the only company working on low Earth orbit constellations for internet service. Companies like Telesat, OneWeb and Amazon all have plans, but nobody has successfully launched a business out of this. Amazon is working on Project Kuiper, which will have around 3200 satellites, but has yet to put out any satellites into orbit. And most of the other companies filed for bankruptcy. SpaceX is actively working to make Starlink less controversial and more space-friendly. At end of life, the satellites will utilize their onboard propulsion system to deorbit over the course of a few months. The satellites will burn up in Earth's atmosphere within 1 to 5 years, significantly less than the hundreds or thousands of years required at higher altitudes. Starlink satellites utilize input from the Department of Defense Debris Tracking System to autonomously perform maneuvers to avoid collisions with space debris and other spacecrafts. This capability reduces human error, allowing for a more reliable approach to collision avoidance. SpaceX also came up with a darkening treatment to lessen reflectivity of satellites. The coating is being tested on one of the newly launched satellites. Jeff Hall, director of the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, said the Starlinks have been just an occasional problem so far, but noted the risk to stargazing will grow as the constellation expands and other companies launch their own fleets. Every invention will have their pros and cons. Only time can tell us how Starlink will perform.